Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification button below to never miss new tutorials and videos on topics in finance, business, or economics you might find of interest. My name is Sava, and today we are discussing yet another test for the normality of a distribution. In previous videos, we have already discussed the kolmogorov smirnov test, the Anderson-Darlin test, and most recently, the Kuiper test. So please check out those videos if you are interested. The today's hero of our video is the Fisher's Curtis's test that has been developed in the 1930 by the famous statistician Robert Fisher. What did he notice? Well, we all know that different distributions are characterized by different values of Curtis's. That is the fourth central normalized moment of the distribution that shows how fat are the distribution tails. And for the normal distribution, it is true that the axis Curtis's of it should be equal to zero. So the easiest way to actually reason whether the distribution is reasonably close to normal or not, is to compare its excess curtises to zero. But until Fisher, nobody figured out how to apply rigorous statistical testing to figure out whether the curtises of a distribution is statistically different from zero or not. And uh, Fisher has come up with a very neat procedure to actually achieve this result. Fisher figured out that the variance of the curtises of a normal distribution can be calculated using this formula that is just dependent on n, the number of observations in our sample. Then we can compare the actual value of curtises that we get from our empirical distribution to zero, that is what we would have expected if the distribution was normal, and convert the ratio of the observed courtesies and the standard deviation obtained from this formula into a well-behaved z-stat that then can be used to convert into a p-value and actually test what is the probability that our distribution is normal given its observed courtesies. So without further ado, let's apply this procedure proposed by Fisher almost 90 years ago to S&P 500 historical returns. First of all, we need n, the number of observations that we would use to calculate the standard deviation of our courtesies. To do that, we can just count our area of returns and get 1,258. Then, obviously, we can calculate the average return and the sample standard deviation. But what we are most concerned with today is the sample courtesies. And we can calculate it in one go in Excel using the curt function. And we apply the curt function to the area of returns and get 3.71. It means that our excess curtesis is quite a lot higher than we would have expected from a normal distribution. Bear in mind that for a normal distribution, uh, the value of curtesis should be zero. But maybe this deviation from zero is just random and we can still assume with reasonable certainty that the S&P 500 returns are normal. Well, to figure it out, we have to apply the Fisher's procedure. First of all, we use this formula to calculate the variance of courtesies. How unstable the courtesies of a normal distribution with uh, a particular number of observations should be. So it's just a ratio, and in the numerator we've got 24, times the number of observations times n minus 1 squared and in the denominator we've got four factors number of observations minus 3 times number of observations minus 2 times number of observations plus 3 times number of observations plus 5 and we close the brackets close the brackets again and get the estimator of its variance but for a z stat we need the standard deviation of courtesies and to do that we need just to figure out the square root of the variance we have just calculated. This procedure is actually astoundingly similar to the variance ratio test one uses to check normality as well. 
and uh, we've got a video on that also, so please check it out if you're interested. Those statistical procedures are quite common, and sometimes the applications are very similar in many different areas of mathematical finance. But I digress. We are actually quite close to the end of our Fisher's test. We can calculate the z-step now already by just dividing the kurtesis by its estimated standard deviation, and we get a whopping z-stat of almost 27. If you remember, even a z-stat of 1.65 is more than enough to conclude that the effect is significant. And here we've got a z-stat of almost 27. But to be absolutely sure, to derive a strict probability of S&P 500 returns being abiding by the normal distribution law given such value of courtesies, we need to apply the normal standard distribution. And uh, there is a little tweak here, because a no standard normal distribution of a z stat of zero would give us 50%, and uh, a standard normal distribution of z stat tending to infinity would give us one. We want the p-value for z stat of zero to give us zero percent, because there is no effect, there is no difference. So there is a slight modification of a uh, z-test to account for the one-tailed version. So we just subtract from one two times the standard normal distribution of the absolute value of the z-stat, and we want the cumulative distribution function, not the probability density function, minus 0 0.5 in the parentheses. And we close the parentheses, enforce the formula, and get basically 0%. Even if you increase the decimal places tremendously, you will never see any digit besides 0. It means that the probability that such a high value of excess courtesies arising from just random disturbance to the distribution is highly unlikely and we can with absolute certainty say that given the Fisher's courtesies test the S&P 500 returns are not normally distributed. The convenience of the Fisher test is that we don't have to calculate the theoretical and empirical distributions and then com compare them uh, among each other. We just need the value of courtesies and then we can arrive at the z-stat. The disadvantage is that such a characteristic of the variance of courtesies is characteristic only of the normal distribution. So you couldn't, for example, test whether the courtesies of the distribution is close to the Laplace distribution of 3. You can only apply this test to check whether a distribution is normal or not. But most of the time, it can be enough. And that's all there is for the Fisher's courtesies test. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, please suggest any further topics on business, economics, or finance you want me to investigate. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click this notification button. Thank you very much and stay tuned.